taken for granted. That's right. Each time is like the first time. <laughs> You're never not nervous. Mm -hmm. You're always praying that the Holy Spirit will come and mm -hmm. teach and preach to the people. Amen. Just use you, That's but right. he will come. Amen. 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 Asking for prayer. I asked the Sunday school for prayer this morning. Mm -hmm. Body still isn't what it should be, and I know my limitations. Amen. Amen. But I don't believe God will take me where He's going to keep me. That's right. Amen. That's right. But I also have common sense. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so I'll use that also. God, we just thank you today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for being in your presence. My Lord. Because God, being in your presence, you'll make it all right. The psalmist say there is a place yeah. that we can go yes. just to be in your presence where you will supply our every need. Yes. So Father God, I thank you for the testimony through music. God, I thank you that you're in everything. God, you're in colors and you're in music, Father God. You're in dance. God, you're just in decisions. Everything. As one of the young singers say, he needs you when he comb his hair. He needs you when he ties his shoes. He needs you when he put on his clothes. We need you in everything. And Father God, I need you now. So come, Holy Spirit, come, Heavenly Dove, that your people may be blessed, that a seed will be planted, hallelujah, Jesus, Thank you, God. that they will be able to use and be able to carry. Yes. This is your servant's prayer, and I lift it in Jesus' name, mm -hmm. and I say amen. 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 <laughs> My subtitle is in his presence, mm -hmm. amen. But the title of our life for you is to just think about today is, I thank God I don't look like what I've been through. You can find my sermon, Sister Sister May. I thank God that I don't look like That's right. what I've been through. My God. If you've been through something, clap your hands. <laughs> if you're going through something, <laughs> Together. 
And they even named both of us Patricia Ann. <laughs> she was always smarter than me. So they called her Little Ann and called me Big Ann. And I don't think I've seen Rocky since I eulogized. My best friend. Brother Michael came into the office. I was struggling. He said, Reverend Thompson, you can do it. Yes. I said, Brother Michael, you got to know God is so good because we are family. Yes. We are family. And right. Michael came, he said, you can do it. And I said, I don't know whether I can do this. But God brought me through and brought me into such a position. Thank God I don't look like yes. what I've been through, sure. Yes. Huh. Yes, the book of Exodus. Yeah. The book of Exodus records the journey of the Israelites' deliverance yeah. from slavery to becoming a nation. Amen? Yeah. The author of the book is Moses, yeah. and Moses was also the person that God chose to lead the Israelites out of bondage. Let's talk about Moses a little bit. Moses is introduced at birth in the second chapter of Exodus. He's one of the few characters of scripture whose course is stretched from his infancy to his death. Pharaoh had given the orders that all baby boys be killed. Moses' mother saw something special in him. So what she did was she hid him for three months. And when she could no longer hide the infant, mother made a basket. And mother put the basket in a room. Well, Pharaoh's daughter always came and bathed at the river. My Lord, that's right. And Pharaoh's daughter saw the basket. So Pharaoh's daughter took the baby. And she kept the baby. And she raised the baby in the palace as her son. But then Moses' life took a drastic turn. Have your life ever took a drastic turn? Hallelujah. Have you ever been all right one day and woke up the next day and everything was different? Hmm. Moses' life took a drastic turn as some of us had lived long enough and Owls have done the same. So what had happened was Moses saw an Egyptian hitting a heel. And Moses killed the Egyptian. And when Pharaoh found out, he ordered Moses to die. But Moses fled. And he dwelt in a land called Midian. In the land of Midian, he met his wife. And he became his father-in-law's shepherd and watched the sheep on the side of the mountain for 40 years. Hallelujah, Jesus. About how long you work before you retire, well, some of us anyway. <laughs> That's right. This is only a small encounter of Exodus chapters 1 and 2. Yeah. Well, in chapter 3, Moses encounter a burning bush. Oh, 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 that's right. Hallelujah. Yeah. An angel came and he spoke to Moses. All right. Amen. Amen. God gave Moses the assignment at the burning bush. To lead the children out of Egypt. The Bible says that it was about 600,000 were on foot. But this was just the army. These were just the soldiers. 
So it was 600,000 on foot. And they ranged from age 20 to 50. But the children, the women, and all of the men over 50, the commentary said the Hebrews, the Israelites, that were led out of Egypt total three men. He was the pastor over three men. And these pastors think they have a place. But not only did he have three million Israelites, some of the Egyptians were converted. So he also had them too. And they weren't even in the number. And then when you get past the people, he had flocks and herds and cattle. But in chapter 10 of Exodus, Moses told the people we would leave no hoof behind. That means besides the people, he had to carry all the livestock. Well, to condense this story, they went around in the wilderness for 40 years. He done tended the sheep for 40 years. He done went around in the wilderness for 40 years. And we go through something a week. And think we have a man. The book of Exodus began with the people of God serving in Egypt as slaves. It ends with them free from Egyptian bondage. In our text, in our text, in our text this morning, Moses is coming down from Mount Sinai. Thank you, Jesus. After being in the presence of the Lord. Guess what, y'all? He was there 40 days and 40 nights. When you turn 40, you don't cry. There's something exciting about that number. You know, <laughs> when we turn 30 or 40, we start from, but it sounds like it's something exciting, Brother Michael, about 40. Amen? And they say when he came down from the mount, that he carried the testimony, which were the Ten Commandments, that had been written on tablets. What? They said his face was radiant. Uh, Amen? Amen. Yeah. Why? Because Moses had been in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. But this time it was different. This wasn't the first time that Moses had been in the presence of the Lord. Moses had been in the presence of the Lord many times before. But it was just something different about this time. So let's talk about being in the presence of the Lord. Amen? What we need to realize is that going in the presence of the Lord is a process. It's a process. Hallelujah. First of all, you got to learn patience. Amen? Now, this was not the first time that God had called Moses to the mount to write the Ten Commandments. If you go back to chapter 20, God called Moses up in the mountain and Moses wrote the Ten Commandments. Amen? He came down, Exodus 20, chapters 1 through 17. He came down from the mountain. When he got down there, the people had gone crazy. They had lost their minds. They were partying in heart. They were melting gold and made the cash and was worshiping in heart. How quick do we forget? How quick we forget. You know, we have a good month. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
no flock. All right. I don't want to see no people. All right. When you take your petitions to the Lord. See, God just wanted to be you and him. He don't want it to be nobody else. All right. He want to tell you what he has for you. That's it. That's it. Oh, yeah. That's it. So to be yeah. in the presence right. of the Lord. Yes. Have patience. Have patience. Because God had patience with you. Go early before the world has had the opportunity to get in your mind. Amen. Then we go to verses 5, 6, and 7. They say the Lord came down in a car. Yes. And they said he walked to and fro in front of Moses. He had to come down in a cloud because we cannot look upon the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. But it doesn't mean he's not in a tree. It doesn't mean he's not in a storm. It doesn't mean he's not in a picture. That's right. When the Lord comes to you, he can't come in all his glory because we couldn't contain it. Amen? But when he came down in the cloud, all right, all right. And when he walked before Moses, he told Moses, I am the Lord. I am compassionate. Yes. I am gracious. I am slow to anger. Yes. I am abounding in love. Yes. He said, I am faithful. Yes. He said, and I am forgiven. Yes. So take your mess. Because you can't fix it. You can't clean it up. Because if you could, it would be fixed. It would be cleaned up. But God told Moses all of his attributes. He told Moses all that he was. He said, this is all that I am. And I'm here for you. Just me and you. Amen? So we need patience. We need to go in the morning. And when we go before God, we have to know and recognize who he is. You ain't standing before no willy-nilly man. It is God. He's holy. He's a holy God. Amen. So, go just as you are. Amen. Go before him naked as when you came into this room. Our Sunday school lesson was on temptation. And what we said in Sunday school was, all of us is hiding something. That's right. All of us is hiding something that we ain't going to tell the world. In our Sunday school lesson, in our commentary, this young lady said how she was hooked on pornography. It wasn't a man. It was a woman. She said she was hooked on pornography. But then she met another woman who told her about a group of women that had the same problem. So she joined the group. And when she got there in our Sunday school commentary, she found out that she wasn't as bad as she thought she was. So whatever your hidden secret is, we all have one. I fess in Sunday school what my physical temptation was. I said it's dope. It's dough. It's cookies. 
and biscuits and pastries and bread with butter. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm not lying. I am hooked. I told them if I open a pack of Oreos, the fortune say two, and I eat the whole roll. <laughs> No control. No self-control. I like Krispy Kreme. Dunkin' Donut. Oh, come on, y'all. Yeah, I, I told them. Uh -huh. Yeah, I told them about that temptation where I can't eat one blueberry cake donut. I, I'm not even a little satisfied till I eat two. And I'm not going to talk about y'all Addicts. <laughs> oh, come on. Me and Avis in Sunday school, now we can drink a diet soon. Never thought I would be able to, but I can now. Yeah, like Pepsi Addicts. It's an addiction, but we want to talk about alcohol, drugs, and cigarettes. An addiction is an addiction. Amen? My love. Sister Jacobs, that's my co-teacher. We're in the same classroom. She loves good food. <laughs> She's from Antigua. And and Nantiga, am I? Antigua. And she and they don't discriminate against pork. They like salt pork, boiled pork, baked pork, you know. Where she comes from, she 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 makes this pot. What's it called, Jane? Pepper it's called Pepper Pie. Oh. And it's got everything in it, y'all. The feet, the tail, the ears. It's got everything. <laughs> Old girl, but a lot of vegetables, too. And you know, they don't say you can't eat this. She said for them it's a cleansing process. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But we have, we talk, laugh, talk. But what about that hit? That hidden addiction, that hidden temptation. Well, guess what? Go before God, naked as a Amen. Tell them all about it. Yes. In the morning. Amen. And after his patience, he went in the morning. God revealed Himself. Moses went before God naked. They say Moses bowed down to God. And they said he worshipped. They said he worshipped. All of a sudden, Moses forgot that he had a problem. All of a sudden, he remembered how good God had been. All of a sudden, he remembered all the plagues he came through. He remember how God parted the Red Sea. That's right. He remember how he gave them quail and manna from heaven to eat. He remembered how he made the bitter water fresh. Come on! With three million plus people. So all of a sudden, Moses' problem didn't look too big to him anymore, sir. It didn't look as big as it looked when he went in the mountain to meet God. And when he actually remembered how good God had been to him, he forgot about himself. And he bowed down and he told God, you are gracious. You are holy. You are merciful. You are good God. You have provided. You have healed me when I was sick. He remembered all the things that God had done for him. So he didn't think about self no more. He bowed down and he worshiped him. Don't nobody have to sing me happy. Don't nobody have to preach me happy. Because when I think about my God and what he's done for me, Just for me. 
there. Yeah. You gotta come down, man. All right, all right. So Moses came down from the mountain. Yeah. This time, with the testimony, the two tablets, the Ten Commandments. But the first time, the set that he broke was for the people. But the difference with this set, Brother Michael, was that they were supposed to go in the tabernacle. Yeah. 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 This set was to go into the tabernacle. Yeah. So they said Moses came out of the mouth. And Moses didn't realize his face was shot. Well. Moses didn't realize the radiance, the glow. Yeah. But when he came down out the mouth, and the people looked at him, they saw the difference. They Because of the fluid the drain was collecting, yes. they couldn't, they wouldn't take it. <clears throat> well, it started getting infected. So they put me on some antibiotics again. Mm -hmm. So I told Jay, you know what my meditation this morning was? Mama. It was to replace fear with faith. Mama. Replace fear with faith. Whatever you're going through, you're scared. It ain't going to turn out right. Lord, didn't he say he'd do it? Have he ever lied? You cannot go back and count the situations that he's brought you out. And you didn't think you were going to get out of it. You can't even remember the situation that he's done watching. Yes, that's right. So you have to replace that fear. That's right. 
with faith. Amen. 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 Knowing, Keisha said to me, every time she go through something, a child will reach. She say, my baby say he do. She always say that. She said, can he do? She always say that to me. My can he do? He can do. So when you come out of the mountaintop, he couldn't see his radiance. He couldn't see his glory. But the people could. But you know what? You cannot shine in the presence of God. That's right. Because God will always outshine you. So you're not going to shine in the presence of God. That's right. Because God is always going to outshine you. But guess what? Your light will shine in dark. Your light will shine in dark places. But just don't let your light shine in your dark places. When you're going through, when you're down, when you're out, just trust God. Just trust God. So you have to bless someone else who's in a dark place. You know? Because you already know what God can do. That's why someone else has to see the light and recognize the light. So y'all have to go with that old song, This Little Light of Mine. I'm going to let it shine. But it say, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen? Yes. And your light will shine brighter and brighter and brighter. I thank God thank you, Lord. that I don't look like ah, what I've been through. Ah, and Moses, ah. all the other times when he went through, My Lord. the people was getting on his nerves. And when God was telling them what the place was coming, the people were there. And the people were Looking there, Michael was said, Lord, they are stiff-necked people. In other words, they're disobedient. They don't want to listen. You know, I'm trying to tell them. Moses said, God, they are stiff-necked people. But then he also said, Michael, but I am to forgive us. You know, we want God to forgive everybody else. He said, forgive us. Me too. Amen? Amen? So this time when Moses went yeah. into the presence of God, I told you in the beginning, it's a process. A process. Yeah. He has grown. Yeah. He has been through some things. Amen. And God proved to him, I haven't failed you yet. Amen. That's why when he broke up the tablets and carried on like a fool, God didn't reprimand him or chastise him because God knew that he had to grow. You know, it, it's a process. And that's how it is with us, Cheryl. It's, it's a process and everybody gets a turn. So now, you know yourself. When you get in the presence of God, it's not like it was when you first got saved. Now it's a totally different experience. Amen? Amen. But guess what? It doesn't stop there. Because we'll keep growing. And we'll keep growing. But see, what God is doing is making us fit for the kingdom. He's making us fit for the kingdom. And one day, heaven is going to be our home. Amen? 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 So in the presence, hallelujah, Jesus, of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of peace. When you go into his presence, yeah. go knowing, have a little patience. I'm not all that I should be. Mama, mama. Go early in the morning yeah. by yourself yeah. when it could just be you and him. And know without a shadow of a doubt, he's going to come. Because he said he'd never leave you. He said he'd never forsake you. 
And when he come, don't try to lie, you already know. Tell him your problem. Tell him your addiction. Tell him your worry. He already know. He just wants you to be honest with him. Amen. Amen. And after all of that is done, worship him. That's right. That's right. Worship him. And when that is complete, come down off the mountain. Go back in the back and let your little light shine. God bless you, Lord Jesus.